lot of people dream about making music and a lot of people dream about making wine and you're doing both. What's the secret, Matt? <laughs> well, the funny part is all my friends that are musicians, so like, you know, like I have friends that have won Grammys and like, they don't want to talk about music. All they do is they come in there like, you're making a wine? How hands on have you been? Have you been sort of out there like stomping grapes, I Love Lucy style or are you more um, of a hands off approach? Uh, I haven't really been stomping grapes, no. I would like to, I would be willing to. I'm just, they haven't invited me for that. No, but I've been pretty involved. You know, I mean, we have an amazing winemaker and Ian totally know what they're doing. Peju and John Anthony Vineyards and Rob is just like a killer winemaker. But I, you know, I was involved, like it's fun. You know, with the Savio Blanc, like we got our first batch and it was a, like a little more like fruity than I would have liked. And I was like, I, you know, and they were ready to sign off on it and the winemaker agreed with me. He's like, let's add some more acid. And so, you know, and with the red, I was kind of like got us started in kind of what we drink at my house and what my wife loves drinking. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm macro, like, let's head this way, you know? And then they're like the smart guys that are way more talented than I am at figuring out how to get that direction. I read on um, one of the websites that you said that, you know, wine is a lot like music. They're both art. You know, winemaking is an art form. and. And what I love about it is it's fluid. There's no formula. Just like music, you can try to sit down to write this beautiful hit song, and it's never going to happen. But it, it, there's magic with certain people at certain moments with certain chords. Same with wine. It's like you get the right grapes. You can try to chase something. You can try to create a wine like something else. And then there's just great moments that happen when you get the right grapes with the right people and at the right year, and you put them in the right barrels for the right amount of time, and it's just become something special. And, that's exciting to me. It's frustrating when you, you make a great wine like we did with our red wine. You're like, okay, we have to do this again. You know, like, <laughs> we have to, yeah, to do this again. You know, so like, but in that sense, it reminds me of music where there's just, there's no, you can't trap it. It's lightning in a bottle sometimes. We do a wine club and we're going to do that tonight. And they all sort of bring different perspectives to the table. And one of the girls wanted me to ask you, which of your songs would you pair with the uh, red blend? I would say Nothing Left to Lose is that one. Something about, I went to school in Chico, California, and it was my first song, Nothing Left to Lose. That's my roots to California. That's the song that says, to a kid from Oregon by way of California. And I feel like that's the story of our red blend first and quarters one. And do you feel like this is something that you guys will do every year? Or is this just a one-time thing? I may quit music, I don't know. <laughs> don't say that, the fans are gonna hate, hate me or hate the wine uh, lovers. We're doing another uh, round of red. I just got the, the, the new samples and it's, killer like i really 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 am excited for next year as well and yeah it's so much fun you know it's just growing and it's been really organic and people have really um enjoy drinking it you know i know i i think it, it, you have to enjoy drinking it yourself that's the rule we made like what's the wine we want to open every day and really enjoy and that we've stuck to that and i have drinking a lot of it so <laughs> So great to chat with you. Much success on the music and the wine, and we look forward to your album coming out in October. Thanks hey, thank so much. You so, thank awesome. you for time. Thanks so much, Matt. In this edition of the Wino Wine Club, we are trying the rock and roll wine, which I'm super excited about. We've got a rock and roll red and a rock and roll white. We're gonna start with the white, which is a Sauvignon Blanc. It's a 2013, it's Napa Valley. It's around $15 a bottle, fresh and fun for summer. Not only is Mary our wine fashionista, but she is also a, a per, how, what do you call, perfumeologist? What, a perfumolier? That a perfume sommelier. <laughs> We've coined a new word. I love it. I'm going to use it. Yeah, a perfume sommelier. You can use perfume as a tool to help you identify aromatics in wine. Because a lot of people will say, oh gosh, I can't smell like you can, and I can't get all that great fruit and white flowers and grass out of there. So. Yeah, I was saying that because I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Gianna, what do you think of this wine? As you know, Monique, I love fruity, kind of on the sweeter side wines. It's delicious. I, I mean, I think the flavors, I, I, I just sitting here to what you said, Mary, just smelling the wine honestly made it very attractive to me. After tasting it, I would absolutely 100% bring this to a party, enjoy it with friends. I, I love it. I can't say enough nice things about it. It's yeah, really, good. really good. Deb, uh, 15 bucks a bottle. I think this is a delicious wine that if you bring to your friend's house, they're going to not only really enjoy the wine because there's nothing not to like about it, it's delicious, but they're also going to really enjoy the story behind the wine. And so for that, it's a great value. And you know what makes the wine even more valuable, Deb? 
What's the that? rock and roll, Matt Kearney aspect, right, Chasta? Chasta, our rock and wino? Absolutely. Well, there's quite a few um, rockers that do wine. It's kind of a popular thing. Like Dave Matthews has wine. He right. does? Yeah, so I've tried it, and it's it fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Also, um, Maynard, I don't know if you guys are real yeah, rockers, but from Tool, um, he has a wine, and mm -hmm. it's also very good. And then I get to ask you, being a rock and roll -y, what do you think about the label? I love the label. It looks kind of simple, but that's what I love about it, because he went... I only, I'm a kind of a snob. I don't listen to iPods. I listen to vinyl in my house um, because I love, the, I love the crackle. Old I'm old, old school. I was raised with the crackle, so I love it. So I love that he went with the old school vinyl record. All right, now on for the big gun. We're bringing out the red, the 2012 Napa Valley Red. It's a red blend. It's mainly Merlot with a little bit of cab in it. Uh, fantastic wine at about $22 a bottle or $25 a bottle or $29 a bottle, depending <laughs> on where you look. Whole Foods I saw for $24.99, so there you have it. Let's try the red, gals. What do you think, Mama? I like it. You know me. I'm not a big fan of reds. It's okay. You're allowed to be honest. If I'm going to buy either or, I'm going to go for the white, definitely. Um, but it is very, it's very good. Price point wise, I mean, it's delicious. I probably would buy it for a special occasion. But if I'm deciding between this and some diapers, I'm probably going to go <laughs> a little cheaper on the wine and buy the diapers. <laughs> Times they are changing, huh, well, Mama? It depends on how long he sleeps that night. Because if it's been a long night, Mama's having a glass of wine. I like this wine. If anyone's been up to Napa lately, they're bowled over by the prices. Mm -hmm. I go up and get a cab, and oh, it's $60. Yeah, and yeah. all I can think is, this is not an everyday wine. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> this is certainly in a little bit higher price point at 22 but this is a delicious wine. Mm -hmm. I think this would compete against the $60 cabs out there, the $80 cabs. I would be really interested personally to see that if I laid this bottle down for a couple years, how it would be. I think that would be really interesting is to buy two of these, mm -hmm. lay them down for a few years and try one in three years and try one in five years. Good idea. And also, which I asked you about this last time with our celeb, we only apparently try celebrity wines. Um, <laughs> that's how we roll. But I asked you last time if it would be more valuable if you laid it down. Matt Kearney, maybe he'll get even more popular in a couple years. The wine could be worth more money. I think you can think that in your head, but <laughs> wine's probably not a good investment for the everyday drinker. Buzz kill. <laughs> okay. Uh, please contact your financial advisor. <laughs> <laughs> you were nice enough, Mary, to actually bring one of your pairings. I brought perfume because I've actually had this wine before, and I know the winemaker. His name is Rob Lloyd. Um, he's also a winemaker for Jessup Cellars, and I have done wine and perfume pairings with Rob. I'm going to pass this perfume around. It is called Black Violets by Tom Ford, and to me, there's violet notes in this wine. Okay. You might not get them, but if you smell this and smell the wine, it's going to bring out some floral notes. Okay. So it's very soft because it's mostly Merlot in the blend, and I really like that about it. And Merlot often has violence on the nose. Now to show you a different note, this has cherry in it. This will bring out the cherry character that is coming out of Ooh, that's delicious. The yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I did not know what violet smelled like okay, until I, I smelled know, it. Right? This would make a guy want to... Eat you on up. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's good stuff. Did you guys get some chocolate notes in this? Chocolate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever Mary says, everyone just yes. say yes. 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 Okay. They all got yes. chocolate yes. notes. Okay. Yes. This perfumer, Sarah Horowitz, um, is a L.A. based perfumer and a good friend of mine. And she and I actually did the, her perfumes with the pairings that Rob and I did. Wow. So this is her perfume called Chocolate Sunset. And talk about each on up. No kidding. Woo. Just smell that and then. With the cherry on top? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Now you're talking. You are the rock and wine. Oh, you've got so much to say about this. is like your forte. Yes. So talk to me about this wine. Well, I think with music, the one thing that I've loved forever is that it evokes emotion. It makes you feel a certain way. And especially with Matt's music, like I was rocking out to it today, it's very sensual. Um, it's very romantic. It's one of those you can put on and it doesn't matter how long the album is. Every single song works, especially for like a dinner party. Everybody just loves it. And that's how I feel about this wine. I feel like it matches his personality. And the red especially is very sensual and romantic and dark and moody. And I just feel like it says who he is. Do you have a, um, a song that you would pair with the wine? Because I know you always do that. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, a Matt song or a song in general? 
You could go for extra credit and give us <laughs> a song in general and a Matt song, or you could do whatever you your little heart desires. I really like Coldplay, and Matt reminds me a little bit of Coldplay, the way that the, it's very dark and moody and romantic, but then it builds, and that's what I feel like this is. It's like it builds to an experience, and I think any Coldplay song is like that, and I feel like Matt is kind of an offspring of that. I don't know if that's any influence to him, but that's what it reminds me of. All right, ladies. Well, cheers to the Wino Wine Club. Thank you so much.